am uh, Samana Datta. I am a postdoc in the group of Professor Oliver Steinberg. I am studying wave patterns in excitable systems. A typical example of these excitation waves are nerve conduction and contraction waves in the human heart. Excitable systems can self-organize rotating spiral waves. In the heart, these spirals have been linked to cardiac arrhythmias and ventricular fibrillation. We are studying them in a simpler chemical reaction, the belusov zabotinsky reaction or simply called the BZ reaction. My current project focuses on three-dimensional spiral waves which are actually called scroll waves. Scroll waves rotate around straight or bent curves that we call filaments. These filaments are not static, but can move through space and change the overall appearance of the scroll wave pattern. A simple case is the scroll ring, which is essentially a spirally donut. The circular filament loop of such scroll rings tends to shrink and collapse. In 2009, our group showed that scroll rings can be pinned to unexcitable, non-reactive obstacles. And this pinning prevents the collapse and annihilation of the wave vortex. In this earlier work, the circular filament loop was pinned to an O-ring-like torus-shaped anchor. These geometries, that is the circles and the thin tori, are obviously good match. However, what happens if the geometries do not match? An interesting example is the double torus, which is a genus 2 object. Just think of two tori glued together. This movie shows on thick three-dimensional BZ system which is being viewed from the top. The actual system is a few centimeters wide and the typical period of the waves is about five minutes. The black rings that we can see are the double torus and the white moving bands are the chemical excitation waves. These waves are caused by scroll wave rotation around the right half of the double torus. This means that the scroll ring can really be pinned to a topologically mismatched anchor. The second movie shows that scroll ring rotation can also occur around both halves of the double torus. Notice here that the wave pattern looks completely different from the previous one. To better understand the three-dimensional aspects of scroll ring pinning, we also computed similar solutions in an excitable model that includes nonlinear reactions and also diffusion. In simulated snapshots, the double torus is blue and we can see the waves are yellowish. Only the posterior half of the waves are shown here. Notice how the wave spins around the right torus but only passes over the left half. This is easier to see in another movie. Here we show that the contact line between the wave structure and the pinning double torus, but we also do not show the anchor here. Depending on the height of the contact line, we plot it in either red or blue. Before you bring out the popcorn, one last movie that shows a simulation in which the scroll wave spins around both halves of double torus. This amazing structure is partly a two-arm scroll wave at the center, but the outer sides have just one wave rotating. The presence of the two arms also increases the overall frequency of the spinned wave pattern. It is roughly twice as fast as the earlier one. These first studies have shown that the interaction between scroll waves and non-reactive obstacles is quite complicated and interesting. Much more work is needed to explore and understand the different aspects of the pin structures. Moreover, it will be interesting to see whether scar tissue in the human heart also can affect and pin excitation vortices. Thanks for watching my video and please do contact us if you want more information.